Here at the San Diego Air and Space Museum, most of the aircraft you see are actual flyable aircraft that at some point in the past have taken to the skies. We do have a handful of replicas that we've built in the basement or offsite, and even a smaller portion, we've got a couple that are just analogs. Uh, most people would consider them giant model airplanes. One example of that is our Horton HO229. Now the Horton HO229 is a very interesting late war development that the Germans came up with. They had a program where they wanted all future aircraft, anything that they were gonna build had to be able to fly a thousand kilometers per hour. It had to fly a thousand kilometers in distance and it needed to be able to carry a thousand kilogram bomb. This program that the German Jägerstab came up with in 1944 meant that any aircraft approved for production had to meet those three gates. As, as long as the war carried on, they really only ever came up with one aircraft that could meet all three of those requirements, and that's the Horton HO229. Ours was built for us by the Northrop Grumman Company on the bequest of National Geographic. National Geographic wanted to answer the question once and for all, did Germany have stealth technology in World War II? The best way to do that was essentially recreate one of the aircraft from the end of the war. The HO-229 has long been seen as a quasi-stealthy aircraft, not because it was built to any kind of a stealth idea, but just because without vertical tail surfaces, without a fuselage, this thing was gonna be a little bit harder to detect on radars of the day. Now, there is no stealth capability. In fact, I can prove to you in just a, one second that this is not a stealth aircraft. As a former helicopter guy with a radar in front of me, I can tell you that each one of the fan blades and the nose of that engine, that UMOT uh, 004, any radar can see those fan blades. When you're spinning them inside of a jet engine, unshielded like this, you can see them from miles away. So there isn't really a stealth factor to this. It's just an extremely advanced aircraft. Now the standard fighter that America had for the last two years of the war was the P-51 Mustang. The P-51 could manage about 440 miles an hour. That's very good for World War II standards, but it's nothing close to the Horton or the ME-262. The ME-262 was the standard day fighter for the Germans for the last four months of the war. That's what they were producing, that's what was showing up at their units, that's what they were using to combat our fleets of B-17s, B-24s, under escort from these P-51s. The P-51, 440, the ME-262, 540 miles an hour. So it was never a, uh, it was never an even combat. They, they were always more advanced. Luckily, the war ended before these could be put into mass production. The Germans actually only completed two of these. Uh, the Horton 229 was one of a series of flying wings that the Hortons were building at the time. And today in the Smithsonian, they have the center section to a HO229 and a set of wings from a slightly different flying wing. We have ours assembled as one piece, whereas the Smithsonian is always gonna have to keep their center section and their wings separate because they don't trace back to the same aircraft.